Hey guys, Ari here. Back again with part three on the boundary wall. <coughs> Why is it I'm always coughing before these videos? So we're running, uh, running in the uh, backside of the uh, boundary wall. Uh, today I was solo, so the first day on part one that you saw was uh, me and the old man. Uh, he'd loaded out this wall previously uh, on the Wednesday because we had to go. I had to go early to vets on Wednesday. And then he'd loaded that out, and then we started on this on the Thursday. Uh, we started about 10 o'clock on the Thursday doing this. And we got that, you know, that flank up 13 course or so uh, with the two pillars right back, <coughs> which I talked about last video. Uh, and it was particularly hot on these days. Uh, I just, a little side note as well, I'm using. From the video that I talked about, about the gloves, the gloves video, I'm actually using uh, some gloves at the moment. I got given on a site, I got given uh, one or two, but I think I only got given one pair of these gloves. I'm not kidding you, I've been using them for the, for about, a, I'd say two weeks solid, and they're showing no signs of wear, these Showa gloves. Green, latex, knitted style. Um, winter glove but they're very fitting and they fit to your hand really well I've got a medium or a size 8 I've got an 8 and the or a 9 I think it's either an 8 or a 9 I'll check but they're fantastic they're really hard wearing the, the, the latex on them and you, know, you can real, really feel the brick in your hand which was some of the things that were criticised about the on the Britling glove video it hasn't really got much attention because who, who cares about your own gloves but it's something that you know if you can get set on the right glove uh you can really save your hands in the long run there's like years i just for years and years i just did i just made do with like shitty gloves i've got i've had dermatitis in my, on my hands i've had um you know i've had cut my hands cut open so you know what i mean just little things that hassle you throughout the years and if you can get set on a good pair of gloves and get them bought in bulk and save a bit of money, they're definitely something to look out for. I've just had a look at these shower gloves. The green style ones, uh, I'm sure I saw them for about £2.50 per pair, uh, which is which is, a, which is a lot more expensive. It's about £1.90 per pair more than these orange ones I've got. But if they're going to last this long, I'm going to weigh up the amount of time I get out of the orange ones, which I said were about two to five days. Uh, and I got two days out, a day and a half to two days out of one pair uh, working on the heavies. And then I got about four to five days out of slaying bricks. So if I can, if I can, I'm going to take note with these shower gloves now, see how long I've been using them. I've been using them for the last three or four days. And I used them for two days previous on another job. So I reckon I'm, like, I'm on a week and a half almost now. So if I can get whew, if I can get a month out of them, which I doubt, but if I can get like three or four weeks out of them, they'll be worth buying because the robustness of them is far better than, you know, the, the weak glove that always, uh, the weak latex rubber one that I've already got. So anyway, a bit of a, a bit sidetracked there talking about gloves, but it's one of the things that, you know, I always like to keep my hands in good nick. I'm never one of these for having fossils on me as hands. I just want to keep them, you know what I mean? I just want to keep them healthy. So, uh, when it comes to this wall, anyway, we, we went back to, I, went, I went back to building corners today because I was, as you can see, profiles were set up on the far side of the wall. Uh, and the only reason I did, the only reason I set up on that side of the wall is because when we were first starting, I had a plan that I was going to do this, the back side first. And then I then I realised that when I don't have my dad with me, my, I have to walk all my gear around the wall in buckets. So I decided on this day, I'd leave the profiles where they were and I'd already racked back, you know, a decent size, uh, decent size pillar corner at each side the previous day, obviously, which was in my, you know, corner building video. And then uh, I, had, phew, I had like a 14 course rack at each side ready to run in. So I thought, why not? Why like start on the hard side where I'll be reaching, you know, just start on the easy side. So I, yeah, uh, a bit of back bending in the morning, doing a bit of front tip, pick and dip. Uh, we're mixing up with a bit of traditional front tip, but 
mainly doing pick and dip throughout this. When I got to around knee height, knee to sort of thigh height, I converted to fully pick and dip them. Using the, you know, the slack line, smiley face technique on, with the fixed bricks. To be honest, I've modified this a little bit because we were doing medding having to keep re-tugging the line and pinning it all the time because it does go slack if you just keep if you don't re-tug your line. So what I did is I just pinned it in the top and pinned it in the top of both sides, just like I'm doing here. But then I just moved one fit one fixed brick clamp up at one side without altering it, we're just tingling it. And then the other side, instead of re-stretching the line, I just wrapped it around the fixed brick. It's a lot quicker. The fixed brick itself, it, you know, if you're just running between two racks without doing the smiley line sort of thing, um, it's quick just, you know, hooking both on each course. But if you do have this, if you do do the smiley line technique where you only have to hook your line onto one fixed brick, it's a lot easier than re-pulling the line every time and re-pinning into your, to the top. Um, you know, so I think that was the whole idea of this, the method in, in in a nutshell, I think that's what Richard meant. I think I just interpreted it a little bit, a little bit wrong. I think I was, instead of you know repulling the pin every time, I think he he did actually say you know wrap the wrap the line around the fixed brick when it starts getting slack. Uh, it, it is easier than repulling the line because wrap pulling a pin out and then wrapping it and then hammering it back in is a lot slower than just pulling the fixed brick on one one of the fixed bricks. Uh, the same one, keep wrapping the same one each course to get it, you know, tighter and tighter. Uh, but it's definitely a lot quicker, especially having your line already pinned into the both ends at the top. Uh, you can, you know, you don't have to keep, you know, letting your spool dangle down or, you know, letting your line, your other, bit, your other pin get in the way. You can just keep, it's already up there. you just got to tighten it a little bit. So definitely ideal. The fixed bricks, I don't, I don't know if really like... Um, I couldn't see myself ever not using one now. Now I'm used. Now I've used it. Um, pinning into joints. I know it seems. You know it's e it's easy when the green, or you're using ready mix and the mortar's soft. You can easily just push the pin in. But when it when it goes hard like this silo mortar we're using, and especially in the, the dead of summer, um, you know you hit a pin into a lot of this brickwork, it just cracks, especially with the mortar that dries too quick. Yeah, a lot easier using these fixed bricks. They're uh, they took me about you know about ten minutes to half an hour to get used to moving them up, but then after that you know it just gets easier every time. Just gonna make sure on these nine inch walls. Um, it's not so bad obviously if you're on houses or just single skin. But on your nine inch walls, you gotta remember to just keep cleaning the backs of them. Out, you know the backs of your between your skins. Just slide your trowel in, make sure they're clean so you can sit the fixed brick on. You can still tingle it uh, with a cockled fits brick, but it just doesn't sit as nice. So you, know, if you clean them edges off it, you don't have to shove your fits brick onto it and risk breaking it. You know what I mean? It is pretty strong though. I, I don't think you could break it. The only way you'd be able to break it if you hit it with big, big heavy lump hammer. That's probably the only way. So I'll, as long as you don't start hitting it with an hammer, it'll work fine. But um, when it comes to running in as well, I've uh, on this technique obviously I'm obviously having to build through the pillar. So every, I've, I didn't do it at first, but I was basically every course where I could run all the way through and I just had four inch just to, to slap onto the outside with two bricks. I ran that all the way through and then, and then you see here where I'm putting the brick on the left ways, the way to mitigate doing this is which I changed my method later on, which I was just adapting to, obviously not doing this, not, I've never really, I haven't dropped on any sort of small panels where I can run both in at once. I've always dropped on really like big stretchers. But normally I'd leave these bricks out and just carry on running straight and then I'd rack. And then I, I could I'd normally do it for about three courses. So like I'll run all the way through across the pillar then I'll run the next one, rack back half a brick, then run the next one and then I've racked a full brick. And then when I then I'll move my line, I'll keep my line there and then I'll rebuild the little pillar. It'll take me like, you know, a couple of minutes put me two bricks on two bricks crossways and then and then a, a brick to the line and then another brick crossways and then basically you, you sort it then it's uh it's a doddle and then you can just repeat the process again and again and again and it's i find that a lot easier especially when you're working on your own and your motor's going off quick on these long runs you want to just be running in as quick as you can running in as quick as you can uh, before your motor starts going off, and I was having to join to every three course, and it would get in dry. It would get in dry at three course, 
So it, it ideally you'd need someone following your jointing, but uh, as again, like this was only like a twenty brick, twenty six brick run, I think, or you know, including the pillar, I think it was like a twenty six, twenty, call it twenty five brick run. It probably wanted a bit, bit more, but that twenty five brick run, like you know, doing pick and zip and, and all these, you know, more efficient methods. You you know, someone joins and you just gets in your way. You end up they end up having to jig around you and stuff like that. Um, but it's uh, so sometimes you just have to both stop after three course and then join together uh, if you've got your labourer. But on this day, I'm on my own, so it was uh, you know it was ideal. Uh, but definitely, definitely try to do all your line work in one section, then drop off, do your level work with these pillars. Uh, that's what I'm going to do in future. And I was doing this le later on in the video, but I wasn't sort of doing it to the extent I'm explaining in this video. I was only doing it every two. Uh, I swear I should have been doing it really every three. Every three, run me fat in. Next course, run me fat in. Next course, run me fat in. Quickly build the pillar, point up, repeat. And I think that'd have been a lot quicker overall throughout the whole build. Um, it is nice doing the pillar as you go obviously every course but it just slows you down a bit and sometimes your line it gets bumped up by that brick you're putting in you know head of ways uh, tying in your pillar and uh, that can throw your line your levels off a little bit so it's nice to get your, your line uninterrupted all the way through the wall and then you know three course at a time then drop back and tie your pillar in you know what i mean fill your rack back little rack back in so that's one of the things that I've learned doing this again, and uh, it's just a little, every time you come to a different wall, it's a bit of a, ref a refresher, uh, if a different layout, you know, big squint panels, small squint panels, you know, big long runs, you know, it's uh, it's just with the layout and the ground was great here. It was tarmac under my feet, and I'd hit the I'd hit this site had already rolled S here now, uh, which I kept tripping over to be honest. So it is a bit of a trip hazard. Uh, which they try and pull it tight but it always snags on your boot so it's one of them things it always baffles me with you know management they're putting out hess you know they're getting drives tarmac they're putting out hessian to you know stop stop tarmac with getting stained too much even though they're putting another layer on it and then they're creating trip hazards do you know what i mean i tripped a couple of times i didn't you know it was only just a minor little stumble i didn't even loop fall or anything or lose my balance but it just kept catching my feet on them so it's just something uh, it is easy for cleaning up I suppose you can just roll it up and all the all the mortar that had crumbled into this hessian I could just roll it up and it was clean then so yeah um, when it comes to as you can see I, I mentioned it last video in the pillar building video your connecting brick that's in between the, like your two headers the stretcher that's in between the two headers on, a, on, on each pillar course which you come to um, uh, it's every other course. Uh, I always put that frog down. Just give somewhere for the mortar to travel and not press the arises, press the headers out to the side or bulge the pillar. So that's one of the things that uh, you know I'm gonna try to you know I'm I'm adapting way more. You know just more little little techniques like that. So, uh, but yeah, it was it was really hot on these days. Absolutely scorcher. You know these. You know, in this video, it, it doesn't really do it justice. It just looks a little bit sunny, but it was absolutely boiling. And I think we we're up into about 24 degrees Celsius, about 24, 25. Um, as high as that, probably. And the motor was going off really quick, and I got it like absolute soup in the tub. I was having to literally avoid the water. All the gobbo that was pulling out had like a glaze of water on top of it. But by the time it hit the boards, and the time I started using it, um, bear in mind the tub was right next to the boards and I'd literally put me you know it'd be a little bit soupy to spread but that's how I went to lay the brick it was like gone not it was going off instantly it touched the brick even doing pick and dip so I do not envy these guys who you know are stubborn and still putting V's in the spread even when it's piss wet and spreading for fucking six bricks and oh god big trowels and stuff you know it's it's fucking I, I don't envy them at all can't can't emphasize this pick and dip or the one at a time method sort of spread for one butter put it on i can't emphasize that enough in this hot weather even if you're not doing it gonna do pick and dip just spread for one brick and lay it pop pop a pop a pop a bed on spread your brick you know pop a bed on v it for one brick press it down perp it, you know put joint on brick boom repeat you might you don't have to pick and dip but fucking hell don't be spreading don't be smashing your fucking 
<laughs> smashing your bricks down into this hor- horrible fucking drag although you just break your wrist so but yeah um yeah i'm looking forward i'm really enjoying this the uh the hot weather to be fair it just makes work enjoyable i didn't actually have the sun shades on today which it, to be honest my eyesight in the best anyway so if i put shades on it just inhibits myself from seeing the work but i'm going to try wear shades when i'm on the block work because obviously you don't have to be quite as finesse with the block work uh, i'm going to be on sh- using my shades when i'm back in the footings um i ordered a a big long tape measure as well to come with me ox level just to check measurements and stuff because i got a 30 meter one you know in a little in a big like spool thing and that that's ideal for just checking your measurements for your house to go to the drawings checking where the door openings are because on this pers- at red row they have the door opening set back um you know like 20 20 or so mil uh, which i've got to check on the actual i, had to, I want to actually need to check on the spec for that because i've had to do some remedial work altering those door op- openings where they aren't set the brickwork back enough uh so the door um the door sill doesn't have big enough drip underneath which uh, it's just you know it's it's just it's a tick in the box really for the hbc but it doesn't actually affect anything really it's just it's you know if he's got a drip it's got a drip he do not need an extra fucking five ten mil smashing smashing out weakening the knee foundation to for the sake of a fucking door drip just get a bigger fucking door sill that's all i'd say anyway um but yeah so uh, looking forward to looking forward to laying the blues actually on monday uh well i won't be laying blues i'll be weighing the trench but but looking forward to laying the blue bricks at some point. I enjoyed laying those because when I was last on a blue, a blues and block wall, there's only about four or five course of them visible. But I remember for the for the amount of blues I laid, uh, I did it straight from concrete with blues because um, we don't, you know, with the firm I work for, we don't do footings. So the, you know, they don't have, like, I've never really known a prize for the, for the trench blocks themselves. So... Uh, I think the other lads are getting about 180 a block and I think we used to get fucking, we used to get about, Jesus Christ, we were getting like one 160, I think we were getting 160 fucking, this was eight, this was like 2016 or two, 2016, 2017 we were getting 160 so, phew, it wants to be at least two quid a block at least, but uh, you know that's the only thing these trend, them trench blocks are good to lay but pff, fucking the amount of lifting they are for how much you get per per block it's like you know it's, it's supposed to straight runs and the you know the, they are wide so you can't they don't, they don't cockle about or anything you just I've, when, last time I laid them I was just pressing them down my foot but you know they still are they still you can't get away from the fact that they are a ball like uh, I prefer to lay them than them dumpies though. Them dumpies, they're they're worth even less, uh, a lot less, and they're just just as slow to lay. To be quite honest, them dumpies. So them big super cell cons, I suppose they're not they're not too bad. Um, but yeah, uh, oh, that's about it. I think that's about it for talking about the wall. I've not had sort of much when it comes to the. Um, I have much really to talk about, really many off topic sort of, you know, topics that I normally have for my uh for my Britain vlogs. It's not really it's just been sort of I've just been doing more of the same really. There's not been sort of much anything interesting to talk about because these walls are sort of self explanatory now, obviously. I, if you've if you're unsure of anything, just go watch all my videos on walls. I've got a boundary wall playlist, I'm sure. I'm gonna update it though, it's only got some of the first first walls i did on this channel um not first walls i ever did i meant first walls that i've ever recorded myself doing so i'm sorry buddy for my technique my technique a little bit oh god i'm tired and yeah uh, i don't want to go out this weekend in the sun i'm absolutely baked by it um a couple a couple of uh you know, a couple, a lot of the guys on Friday were like leaving at twelve. It was that hot, and for me, like a fucking idiot, was still working away at like four o'clock. So, uh, I got about on this wall. I got on my own. 
all bricks were loaded bear in mind i only had to reload about i think i had to reload about 250 bricks myself but all the walls that all the walls that were already all the bricks that were already there I was just getting my mortar, which the tub was right behind me, where you can see me laying. It's right next to my, my board, so I got just shy of 750 bricks in. Um, and that was brilliant corners. I didn't have any profiles up, that was just brilliant corners. I already had two corners built there, so that's sort of cheating, but uh, then I built, you know, just corners after that. Um, I think I took this near side panel, the one that's closest to the camera. I think I took that one course high, one course higher than it should have been. I think it should be. I think I sh I need to take six bricks off of it, but I'll do it when I go to top the wall off. I think it meant to be reds, um, red brick for this near side panel, and then the other panels is slightly, uh, the ground slightly higher there, so that's all right. But I'll see because sometimes you know with these red row walls, it's meant to be like one point eight to your to your contrasting red brick and then you've got like a one then you've got a uh two two five sort of you've got a contrasting brick and then a 150 tile brick and edge which is two two five in total so it takes your wall to just like just over two meter so it's to simulate a two meter fence basically but wall it's then that's what it should that's what they want it from your pinker level which is you know like your tarmac level so but sometimes i've come to some walls and they're well higher than two meters so i always give myself the benefit of doubt i take it right up to um i take it out up to 1.8 for me before me contrasting red or you know sometimes i take it to 1.875 uh i forgot what the gauge is for that so it's 1500 plus 225 is 1725 and 1800 so that's yeah so i normally take it to about 1875 and then because depending on how the ground level is or how management want it sometimes they want it a little bit higher so i've and normally the the height 18 normally 1875 is literally my max i can reach up a milk crate and then basically the only reason i've taken that eye as well is because when you go to top them off you just haven't got as, as much work to top them off so you've only got you know i could say you know say a boundary wall is I say 30 bricks long then times two skins with the pillars so say you've got 70 bricks in a whole full course of a boundary wall and then you've got to add on and then you so you've only got to get 70 bricks up on a scaffold plus a few extra for your pillars uh so and then you've got your brick on edge so you know 70 so 35 times three that's like 100 110 120 then you 70 You've only got to get like two hundred and fifty bricks lifted up onto a scaffold, and then you've and then a few packs of tiles and you've finished your wall. So that's the only reason I take them right up, is just to limit the amount of gear I've got to lift up onto the scaffold. So, and like you know, two hundred and fifty bricks and all that tile and edge, it's it's doable. In it's doable in a day. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, I like to leave myself like a day's work to top them off. Maybe two days, depending on how big it is. Uh, and then I'm only topping walls off for a day or two and then because if it rains you basically lost a full day topping walls off because you can't do tops when it's raining uh, so I try to get it minimise the amount of work I've got to do to top a wall off definitely so anyway guys thanks a lot for watching thanks a lot for the support this is a bit of a longer one um, I'll leave a picture of last uh, last I think last video I'll, or the video after this I'll leave some pictures of the wall and finished products of the last one i built so anyway guys thanks all for watching if you enjoyed sub hit the subscribe button uh, leave us a comment and hit the like button that helps massively and i will see you in the next one